Right then, so this afternoon or this evening, we're just going to go through some of the basic fundamentals for clipping. First of all, we just need to go through the basic tools used for clipping. There's many different techniques. Um, you know, they've each got their place. Some people get on with some methods better than others. So, first, we're going to talk about is the bob punch. Okay, two types of bob punch. One on a wooden handle, this is more used for flat shoes, and then we've got our upright handheld um, bob punch. Okay, this is more commonly used with concave. Again, the one with the concave, you haven't got to push as much out, you know, you're not dealing with flat steel. You can get the tool into the concave, pitch it out, hit it, whereas with a flat steel shoe, you probably want to give it more welly, so you're best off having it on a wooden handle. So, that's the bob punch. Okay, note the end of my bob punches are not square, they're rounded off. Okay, if you've got a square bob punch, if your hand's not square, if your hand's not square, it will look twisted in the finished shoe. Okay, so always round them off, you, you can get away with it. Um, and again, if you've got sharp edges on your bob punch, that can also mean, that can also mean um, but you can end up, as you draw that clip, can end up with splits and cracks in it. Then moving on, we've got um, hammer drawn clips. Obviously this is what we call a double ender. It's got a ball pane on one end and it's got a cross pane on the other end. Obviously a cross pane straight, ball pane ball shaped. Okay, another example of a ball pane hammer. I've got one here. Obviously it's normal hammer and it's got the ball on that end. Likewise, you can get cross panes like it as well. Again, personal preference. What I would say is ball pane clips normally don't, they look out of place, um, especially if it's a normal size ball pane, they do tend to look out of place on concave shoes. With a concave shoe, you don't want to pull away too much of the outside border because you're going to make a weak point. Um, cross panes are best off used on either very light sections, narrow sections, or concave. Uh, ball panes lend themselves more again to flat steel. Lastly, we've got this one here, which is a very small Diddy Mini ball pane. I use this technically as a bob punch, okay? And I'll use it at a competition, especially when they're bigger shoes for um, uh, flat shoes, roadster classes and stuff. The reason you use that, you get a nice big blob, which gives you plenty of material to get a clip. However, that will have to be used in conjunction with someone using a sledgehammer. Okay, so for the likes of your diploma exams, you don't have a striker, so forget that. Okay, it's just another method mainly used for competitions when working with someone else. Okay, so the other most important part or the most important tool we use for pulling clips is A, our hammer. The importance of a hammer, obviously there's lots of different hammers on the market. Some have big faces, some have small faces. Okay, some have a longer, sort of like height to the hammer. Okay, for pulling clips, you need to have a longish hammer. If you have a very short stubby hammer, like a mustad or something like that, when you go to pull the clip over the edge of the anvil and you're drawing the clip and you need to get on the heel of your hammer, Okay, if you have too much of a short hammer, it's very difficult to get on the hill without cracking your knuckles or the shaft on the edge of the anvil. Okay, that's really, really important. The taller the ham hammer, the easier it is to pull the clips. If you look, and I'll, I'll share the link, there is a link of Matt Randall's um, pulling bob punch clips. If you look at his hammer, he's got a big face weighted hammer with a really long face on it. And you can just see how easy it is for him to draw the clip out to be efficient on the hammer. Lastly, and the most important tool of all, is the anvil. Okay, with things on the anvil, we need to use, and they need to be serviceable. Obviously with wear and tear over a period of time, we end up with broken rounded edges on the anvil. They are no use when it comes to pulling clips. We need a nice, straight, flat, relatively sharp edge to pull clips, okay? Some people like to pull the clips on that part of the anvil, some like to pull it there, some like to pull it at the end, and some people like to put it on this side. The thing when you're pulling clips, 
or doing anything on the anvil, the nearer the center part of the anvil is, okay, I under the sort of main bulk of the tape, that's got the most force in it. When you do it over this end, not only is it very noisy, but there's nothing supporting it, so you don't draw your metal as much. However, sometimes when pulling clips, because of where you're holding your tongs, the only way to pull effectively is around this part of the anvil. So there's going to go a few different clipping techniques. First thing I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you what can be achieved. Obviously, some uh, shoes you see on Facebook and at competitions, etc. They will have what we call a mass slot, which is an old way. It's just a point a bit there, which is where the clip's going to go. And that's obviously just pulled over the edge of the anvil and you get a very big strong clip. What I want to just show you first of all before we start, just got some old scrap shoes to play about with it. I'm just going to show you what you can achieve by having a good solid clip pulling technique and not doing anything. Not using a bob punch, not using a hammer to draw the clip, just using your turning hammer. In some countries, traditionally, this is the way they pull clips. I think you'll find in Italy and in Germany and countries like that, they used to just literally just forge the clip out of the hammer. That normally will take out too much material from the, um, obviously the toe, obviously your biggest point of wear. Um, but it's just, to sh this is purely just to show of how important the technique is as opposed to displacing the material to start with. If you can pull a clip like this, you can pull a clip with anything. But it's a good starting point just to be a, as an exercise. Pop it, oh. Obviously this is an old practice shoe of mine. Okay, just got a little bit of a start there. And that was just a couple of taps of the round side of the hammer. Okay, just good, strong, solid technique. So, put it over the edge of the anvil. rasping or anything I've got a nice strong big clip okay on a shoe it's quite proportioned I'm not taking away too much material from the toe but the point I'm trying to make there is apart from the actual drawing technique I didn't use a bob punch or a hammer and I've already got a clip like that ideally I'd probably for a shoe that size I probably would want a bigger clip but you know 
back wheels to dice. So, obviously going to move on now. And we're going to go through some basic actual breaking down and looking at the clip pulling technique itself. So you can practice, and the thing with clip pulling, you can go and practice on any old, as long as they're not completely worn out, you can go and practice on any old shoes. As it is, over the forge here, we've got crates and crates and crates. You can't see them, Bob. We've got crates out the back in the, in the back barn of old army shoes. Obviously these are just a basic concave shape, no heels in them, no clips, just eight and a half holes. Ideal for learning how to pull clips. Um, obviously this is how we learn how to pull clips in the army because we have sheds and sheds full of these. Okay, so I'm just going to go for a toe clip. The key thing with pulling clips is correct heat, correct use of tools, correct technique, and most important of all, correct heat. There's no point trying to pull a clip if your steel is cold. Okay, if it's by the time you've faffed around, especially when you start to learn, by the time you bob punched it, if it's not still a good strong yellow heat, get it back in the fire. Okay? And the most important part of pulling clicks is confidence. I can guarantee most people when pulling clip in the forge, especially at the college, if I was to walk over and stand over you and watch you do it, you'll mess it up. Okay. You mess it up because you'll just go nervous. So confidence is key. So I'm just going to put um, a handheld bob punch toe clip on this shoe. I'm just going to go through the process. Keep playing. Right? Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bob punch and put it into the concrete. Okay. Pushing it out at an angle. Important that we don't go all the way through the steel. If we go all the way through the steel, then we're going to end up with a hole in the shoe. Then lastly, save the square hole there, do it one last tap. That'll push a bit of a bubble out the back. Okay, level up behind the clip. And then where that bubble lies, going to hold that over the handle so the bubbles over the edge come through there okay and then I'm just going to give it a couple of taps okay just to give yourself a line there that will give me something to hold on to when I draw the actual clip okay So I've got my line, that's why I'm going to hold it on the anvil, round side of the hammer, and I'm hitting it and drawing it towards me. I'm not going straight down on it, I'm dragging it. So three hits, okay? One, two, three. Three dragging hits. Two hands on the hammer. Okay, then with the flat side, same again. Three dragging hits. One, two, three. As you can see, that's displaced material at the base of the clip. And now, getting on the heel of the hammer, starting at the base of the clip, working towards me, I'm going to drag that out. and just get it warm. Okay, normally, ideally, we should be bob punching and doing all this in one heat. Obviously, we're staying down for demonstration purposes. Okay. So I need to get it hot again. Clean. 
nice. Okay, so straight away, base of the clip, heel of the hammer. into a sharp edge of the anvil, just give it a couple of slaps on top. Same on the other side, push it in, sharp edge. Not only will that, not only will that flatten and level behind the clip, it will give you a start and a finish, and if it is a bit sloppy, it will just tidy that up and crisp the whole thing up. Okay, make sure the shoe's level. What a lot of people now do is then set the clip on. What you need to do first is go around straight up and down, around the toe, and all this material you displaced there, push it back in so it's flowing. The amount of people just leave it hanging out, you know, like the back end of a sheep who's just given birth to um, four lambs, okay? But push it all back in and then keep it flowing. Sometimes you see really nice shoes and this outside board is all at the toe, okay? And then lastly, once I've gone straight round the edge, I'm going to set this clip on. So I'm bringing my hammer at a slight angle, knocking that outside edge off, and then just run it through the base of the clip. And I'm setting the base, I'm not hitting the top of the clip, I'm hitting the base of the clip. Okay, setting that on. There you go, Bob Punt fit. The problem is with pulling clips very often, especially with concave, okay, is by pulling the clip very often, you'll alter the shape of the shoe. For some reason, when you Bob Punch your clip, especially on hind shoes, when you put quarter clips on, it does straighten the quarters of the shoe. So you can make a really nice shaped shoe, go and pull the clips, all of a sudden, the whole shoe's fallen apart and gone very straight. Okay, so then you've got to bend, bend the branches again. Okay, not ideal. When you have a clip, certainly with a cross pane on a concave hind shoe, that doesn't tend to happen. So, me personally, when I do toe clips, I tend to use a bob punch. If you use a bob punch, as long as you've got a center dot, you will always 100%, unless you're blind, have a clip which is in the center of the shoe. This kind of actually is really important and actually one of the, one of the, one of the key f reasons that people fail their diploma exam is when they clip their front shoe is they clip it slightly off center. This happens a lot with hammer drawn clips. More about that in a bit. But if you pull the clip off center, when you go and fit your shoe, if you then fit the clip central on the foot, you're going to be short on one side, long on the other side. A lot of people in the heat of their exam fail to notice what's going on then. Now the shoe on, it's too late. They fail because they're short on one heel. Okay, so it's really, really important. Okay, so in quick time now. Another key feature of uh, pulling clips, sorry, when you finish, and this is obviously just a practice shoe, so I'm going to fold the clip over. When we finish, we want to know about is our clip big enough when we fold the clip over on the section the clip should be as tall as the section is wide that is a key because sometimes you see clips which are too small sometimes you see clips which are far too big that is the kind of guy so if we've got a seven eight um width of our section then our clip ideally needs to be seven eights tall okay from the Ground, uh, foot bearing surface to the tip of the clip. Okay, so I'm just going to pull another clip now, but this time I'm going to do it in quick time. I'm going to do a bob punch in there, Byron, and then I'll pull the clip back through there again.
One thing about pulling clips, you'll see a lot of different people pull very good clips and they'll all have a slight different technique. The fundamental is the same, but you're dragging material from the outside board with the edge of the shoe and drawing it upward towards the um, upper hoof, okay? thing is it's about finding the method you feel most confident at doing. Okay so again straight in level up. Okay, note when we look at the outside border, I've drawn some material out but I've not taken a massive chunk out. One of the common mistakes is, especially with concave, is you see people with a round sort of hammer dragging too much material out. Not only do they end up with a very low, broad, too thick a clip, which they can't draw from, because the source is too wide but too short. Um, what you also do when you do that is you're taking too much of the outside board away, so therefore weakening the outside edge of the shoe. Okay, especially with a toe clip, that is the major wear point. If you take it away too much, the horse is going to wear the toe out even quicker. Okay, so. That's um, obviously concave using a handheld bob punch. Okay, I'm just going to do a flat one. Just pretty much the same technique. Okay, but obviously this time we're going to use this wooden handled bob punch. flap just coming in from the outside border so I push a bubble out okay and then get that bubble give it a crack down the hole okay that gives us our line over the back okay to start it going and then I'll get around here three dragging round sides Dragging round sides. Then we're down the hill of the hammer. Working the base of the clip. Keeping control of it. And just flatten them off, get rid of all your lines. Again, crisping them up, level up behind the back of the clip. Pushing the corner into the edge of the handle. Okay, push all our 
Material backing at the toe, make it flow. And then set our clip on at the base. Key thing with clipping, nobody ever watched a video of how to clip or saw a demo on how to clip, went and pulled a perfect clip. It's one, of those it's one of those things where you've got to practice, practice, practice. Okay? The other key thing with it as well is it is the kind of thing, you know, it's the last, apart from rasping up, it's the last thing we do when we're shoe making. So we've gone for the whole process of making the shoe. And then we go and pull the clip and we mess the whole shoe up because the clip's not good enough. So and again, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of pressure behind pulling clips. Confidence is the key. The best thing you can do, especially if you've not made a shoe for a while, is go and grab some semi-usable scrap shoes and just have a go at pulling a few clips before you start. Just to get your eye in. It's important. So, we're going to move on now. We're going to talk about the black heart of hammer clipping. I say the black art of hammer clipping. It's one of those things where you've just got to practice, practice, practice. Once you've got, the, and it's, it's a lot of it is a feeling. And you can't kind of teach feeling, you can only guide. The key thing when you learn to hammer clip, if it goes wrong, is trying to understand why it went wrong. Did I not pull enough material over? Or did I not hold it over the edge of the anvil enough? Did I not have, did I come down too much of an angle with my hammer? Okay, it's all different techniques. What I would say, again, depends on the section of the uh, shoe you've got, depends on how much you hold over. What I tend to do, you just come up there, Byron? Just come up so you can see that. Look up. Look up. Okay, as you can see there, I've got probably about a quarter of an inch material hanging over. Okay, and when I come down with my hammer, I will come down trying to hit accurately in the same place every time. And after, once I've started to form a V in the material, I'll start to bring my hand down and hammer it in. Okay, and that's how we get our source out. So let's do that. Let's have a quick look. Good to see some of you in class. One, two, three. At least three of you are field officers and lecturers. I've done with some more students in there, but at least you can watch us back. And the beauty of having a video like this afterwards, or when you go and practice it, you can obviously reference this video and you can just re rewind back through it. Okay? I do have some slow motion clip pulling on the YouTube channel as well, if you check that out. The thing is, when we're clipping, I mean, slow motion video lends itself to clipping because when we do do clipping normally, it happens so quickly, you can't see what's going on. Our eyes only work at a certain speed. So watching it on slow motion is a good way of actually understanding. Okay, so holding the material over the edge of the anvil, lightly start with coming straight down, locking my hands in so it's not bouncing around. And now I'm starting to come down the edge of the anvil. Okay, once I'm at that position, obviously I'd turn my hand around if I'd got a normal one. Get the flat side of a hammer. Just give it a couple of slaps there. Okay. That will give myself something to grab hold of. And straight away, heel of the hammer. I'm going to drag it this time. bubble on this but again if you do end up especially with hammer clip slightly out of while well, you've got the heat there 
get a rasp on it. Square it back up again. The key thing is, if you've got enough material in your clip, it doesn't matter if it goes a little bit wrong, you can fix it with a rasp or a file. Okay, let's do the other side. when you, you hammer clipping it is, is an easier source to pull actual clip from. So you can actually be a lot quicker than you would do if you're using a bob punch. And so same again, hold the right amount over the edge of the anvil, back cork pinch, start coming down. Bring your hand round. And you've got enough. Okay, and again, hold the edge of the Pull the hammer. Draw the clip. Push your edges in. Level it up. We're getting clip pulling. Okay, it's, it's, it's one of those things you need to practice. Practice will make it consistent. Okay, so to practice and just try different methods again you'll find the way which suits you the most you know a lot of, it's a bit like fire welding where there's lots of people with different ways of fire welding and it works for them but a lot of that is because of confidence okay and if you find a way which just gives you more confidence and it works for you then there's nothing wrong with it as long as the finished product is okay okay that's the key thing right so just gonna go through rasping up a little bit with you. Alright, stay on the bar. So just gonna go through rasping up, okay? Rasping up is easy in the sense of a lot of people make it hard for themselves. Either, either they don't do enough forging and forge enough heel on with a hammer, so they just have got a generic blob and then they've got to rasp the hell out of it to actually make it a functional heel. Okay? If you do enough work with your hammer, forging the, uh, rasping the heel up at the end of it is simple and you're just um, improving the aesthetics of the shoe. It's a rough guide, so we've got two things we need to pay attention to when we rasp a hill. First of all is the outside hill radius, okay? This needs to come in a nice round smooth flow into the center of steel, which is around there, okay? So that outside board needs to flow round to the center. The inside edge of the hill needs to be, not too close, you can mount the camera. 
okay? The inside of the hill needs to be straight and needs to be pretty much parallel to the angle of the frog. That's called our stone trap, okay? And that stops, they used, I mean, the way they used to fit shoes all short um, on hunters and stuff, that was to stop stones from being trapped in there. Modern way of fitting is pretty impossible if you're fitting correctly to stop that from happening. However, if those angles are set right on the shoe, it will stop it from impinging on the function of the frog. Okay? So, why, as, as a tip, to get that angle, and it, it nine, well, 99 times out of 100 works bang on for me, if I find the halfway distance between the toenail hole and the center dot, which is there, and I run that through my heel, that will give me the right angle to rust my stone check or stone trap away. Same with that side there. Now this is easily done when we go into the vise by placing our rasp through there and taking it away straight. What I tend to do is I take that away straight, then blend my outside edge, outside radius into the center. So let's go through that now. Do one heel at a time. Okay, you see a lot of people wasting a lot of time, they get in the vise at the end of the shoemaking sequence and they'll spend more time in the vise than they will do on the anvil making the shoe because they get their little files out and their sanding systems and they just get, it's, it's, it's a bit like, um, it's a bit like crystal meth, you know, once, you, once you've had a go it's very difficult to get out of it and you see a lot of people stuck in the vise. Okay, get in. Do what you need to do, okay, and just blend it. Okay, all this over rasping stuff. So these are basic stock shoes, you know. These, these aren't your diploma specimen, you know. Trust me, us college lecturers, we can see for all that. Right, so in the vise, I'm going to rasp the heel, it will bend. So I'll get in a nice, strong section uh, part of the shoe from a halfway point. So all that excess there, I need to tidy up at that angle. So, straight up and down, go straight. Okay, bring that back up. Once I've done that bit, obviously the shoe's cooling. Okay. Now I'm gonna work on the outside edge and bring that into the center. Okay, remember the art of concave is that this outside border, when it comes around the hill, blends into the inside. So clean over the top. Check the line. Okay, I've not thinned the border at all. And then lastly, okay, just to finish that branch, I'll go flat over the top, flat my rust, I'm just cleaning it. I'm not taking out any hammer marks because there's none in there. Same with the outside border, I'm just cleaning it. And then I get a file and go from the center of the toe, angle of the concave, and again, I'm just cleaning it. I'm not making it shake, flow, or anything like that. I am literally just cleaning it. And again, take all the sharp edges off. Do the clean up. And then lastly, on the foot surface, and this is one of my biggest pet hates these days, is you've got to box it off. It doesn't need to be dripping hot to box off. You all do it with your linishes at work. If I give you a rasp, because this hasn't got an on button on it, okay, most of you just literally do a token gesture. gesture. I think that's, it's, it's got to be functional. Okay, that is not enough. If it gets caught on it, it's going to trap. So start your heel. Obviously, the further around it gets, the wider the box can get. All the way around to the back of the hill. Ok, 
Okay, then lastly, just get your file and just tidy it up. Okay. Now, depending on how wide you're fitting that hill, yes, you want a little bit of flat steel, but you want more boxing than flat steel. Okay. Right, so to the inside here now. Same again, other than we've got a brushing edge, so we need to rust that brushing edge at the angle of what we forged it. Find your line, find your angle, straight up and down. Okay, show yourself a bit more shoe. Now remember, we've got the angle of the brushing edge on that inside, round that, then follow it around to the centre. Okay, making sure you use 14 inches of the rasp. Don't no worse than seeing people doing this. Okay, you've got all that, use it. If it was the male appendage and you had 14 inches of it, I'm damn sure you'd want to use all 14 inches. Okay. Okay, flat over the top. Okay, show yourself a bit more. Clean around the sides. Notice I'm literally just cleaning around the sides, just pushing the scale off. Okay, around the top flat again. Again, in this concave border. Before I box it, Remember, we haven't done the toe yet. It ain't gonna take a lot. We've done the inside of the toe. All we've got to do is go flat over the top and at the angle of the first the edge over. Okay, and again, go over the file. Okay, and then lastly, inside branch, box him off. Not as much as you do on the outside, but you're still going to get a little bit, unless it's a hunter. So we've got a nice flowing outside into the centre, our stone traps, we're at the right angle, again, imagine we're going to have a frog up in there, okay, like so, okay, so that's not going to impinge on him, so 
Okay, so that's obviously the concave. But it's important that this outside border flows all the way around into the outside border. Again, if you don't close your heels up when you forge them with your hammer, you will not get that. So hammer forging is really, really important. Lastly, we'll do the same this flat shoot. It's exactly the same technique, except for you've not got the concave border to worry about. Okay, but it is important that you do go around the inside edge with your file just to make it flow, okay? You don't want to over round it because then you'll lose the definition. But you certainly want to just, at the correct angle, just round that sharp edge off. You know, examiners, assessors, judges don't like it when they pick up shoes and they're like razor sharp on the corners. If it's razor sharp in the hands, if a horse catches itself, it's going to do itself an injury. So straight away, find my halfway mark. Again, if you look there, there bro, my angle's bang on. Normally it's from the flat shoes. Okay, so straight away. a bit more. Okay. Flat over the top. All the way out of my border. So this is about getting the job done. Inside border. To the toe. Make it nice and flowy. Outside border. Take the sharp edge off. Okay, and if you work in a logical sequence, you won't forget to rasp anything. Okay, and just got boxing. Flat shield, so you can need a bit more boxing for the concave. people made um, last week on the last task set if you look through everyone else's shoes you'll notice Gareth's his heels conformed exactly to that rounded outside into the center with a stone check taken at the right angle if you look at them hills they just stand out there you go. okay because they're right Okay, lastly on the inside this one. Obviously when we, when we made this shoe, we run the inside branch up a bit, so it's a bit narrower. But other than that, it's exactly the same as we're asking the other. Again, the angle's correct. So straight away, bring the point in, get it nice and rounded to the center. Away. Okay. 
then whilst we're in the vice still, just literally go around the outside of your toe. Make sure your toe's blended. Now we've got a boxing. Okay, not as much as you did on the outside. But you've got kind of a sharp edge here, because it's obviously the horse into the to itself. Okay, and then lastly, on this side of the shoe, so just tidy my clip up if it needs it. Get either side of it. Okay. Okay, so we've got two hills. This one's slightly narrower. We've worked the steel up because it's the inside. A little bit longer on the outside, but that outside border comes round to the centre of the steel, and we have our stone trap taken away to accommodate the frog. It's the same on this one. Okay, you imagine that nice, big, fat, juicy, chunky frog in there. Okay, okay, right. If anyone's got any questions, speak now. Anyone got any questions, put them in the comments below. Obviously, if you think of a question later on, just again, put it in the comments below and we'll get back to you on that one. Obviously, tomorrow morning, I will be posting a task for you guys to be completed by the end of this week, okay? Um, obviously, it's key that you complete all these tasks if you can, especially the theory, for sure. There's no excuse not to do the theory. Okay. Um, how did... Right, okay, hang on, Joe. Bear with me. As a rough guide, Joe, how we work that out, how we work it out is, if our toenails are in the right place for that size shoe, okay, and that shaped foot, if we find halfway between the toenail and the center dot, okay, and this works on hind shoes as well, but if we find halfway between them two, which is roughly there, and we draw, our rasp or our ruler through the edge of the hill, okay, that will basically give us that angle. Does that make sense? Okay, same on the other side, halfway through, that gives us that angle, okay, to chop that off. Okay, I've lost a bit of definition on that one myself because I, I rounded my hand. That one, I kept my hand nice and straight, I bloody rounded it. And it's just lost a bit of definition, or even though it is at the right angle, it just doesn't look crisp. I like crisp. Crisp is cool. I'll also post the task tomorrow morning. It will be 
Um, obviously, it, get, it depends on what those who are shoe making, because you've got access to force, it depends on what stock you've got. But I will want to see a front and a hind shoe. I want to see. The I will want to see a front shoe toe clipped um, and the hind shoe quarter clipped. I don't really care whether it's concave or it's flat. Depends what you've got available to use. And then I want to see it rasped up as well. Okay. But I actually set the task, and I'll give you some sizes tomorrow. Um, thanks for those of you who have watched. Good to see you, Alan. Okay. Um, yeah, and watch out for the task tomorrow. I'll get it posted. And um, enjoy the rest of your evenings. Oh, just before you go, don't forget that there is some slow motion clip pulling on some of the videos on my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of basic stuff. Those of you who were struggling with your toe bend, especially on your hind shoes, um, last week, go and revisit that because it's broken down on that, um, and there's a lot of diagrams and etc., which makes a lot more sense. So have a look on them. It's a resource. It's always there. It's free of charge. Go and have a look. Okay. Any questions? Leave them in the comments below. Um, speak to you all soon.